Welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, we will discuss the exercise MCQs of chapter number one, biodiversity and classification. So, let's start. Question number one is, which domain of life is characterized by organisms that often inhabit extreme environments and have cell membranes with ether-linked lipids? Bacteria, archaea, eukarya, protista. You have studied in the unique features of domain archaea that their cell membrane contains lipids with ether linkage between glycerol and fatty acid chains. And these fatty acid chains are branched. That's why their cell membranes are more resistant to extreme conditions. While bacteria and eukarya have ester linkages in their cell membranes. So, B is the right option, archaea. Question number two is, what is a key difference between the domains bacteria and archaea? Bacteria have membrane-bound organelles, while archaea do not. Both of them don't have membrane-bound organelles, so this cannot be the option. Option B is, bacterial cell walls have peptidoglycan, while archaea do not. Yes, this is the correct option. Archaea lack cellulose and peptidoglycan in their cell wall. They have special polysaccharides and proteins. Question number three. Which of the following kingdoms includes organisms that are mostly unicellular? eukaryotic, and can be autotrophic or heterotrophic. Fungi, animalia, plantae, protista. So, you have studied three groups of kingdom protista. First group is protozoa, which are animal-like protists. They are unicellular and heterotrophic. For example, paramecium. The second group is algae, which are plant-like protists. They are autotrophs, for example, euglena. The third group is myxomycota and oomycota. They are fungi-like protists, for example, slime molds and water molds. So, kingdom protista includes organisms that are mostly unicellular, eukaryotic, and can be heterotrophic or autotrophic. Question number four is, in which kingdom are organisms predominantly multicellular, autotrophic, and have cell walls made of cellulose? Animalia. Fungi. Plantae. Protista. Very simple. Kingdom plantae includes organisms that are multicellular, autotrophic and have cell walls made of cellulose. Next question is, which of the following criteria is commonly used to classify viruses? Their ability to cause specific diseases, the type of nucleic acid they contain, the color of the virus particles, their mode of transmission. Viruses are classified based on several characteristics, including their genetic material, replication strategy, morphology, and the hosts they infect. So B is our correct option the type of nucleic acid they contain. On the basis of genetic material, they are classified into two main categories, DNA viruses and RNA viruses, and further classified into single-stranded or double-stranded. MCQ number six is, which virus group includes viruses such as coronaviruses and influenza viruses? Double-stranded DNA viruses, single-stranded DNA viruses, double-stranded RNA viruses, Single-stranded RNA viruses. They are classified as single-stranded RNA viruses. So, Delta is the right option. MCQ number 7. At which level of biodiversity assessment do we evaluate the variety of different species within a particular habitat or ecosystem? Genetic diversity. Ecosystem diversity. Species diversity. Functional diversity. We have three levels for the assessment of biodiversity. Species level, genetic level, and ecosystem level. The species level is the identification and counting of different species within a given area. So, this is our correct option. The genetic level refers to the variety of genetic information contained within all individual organisms of a species. While the ecosystem level includes the range of habitats to understand how different ecosystems function. MCQ number 8. Which method is best suited for assessing the distribution of species across a gradient of environmental conditions within a single geographical area? Quadrant sampling. Point counts. Transect sampling. Remote sensing. Quadrant sampling is useful for studying plant populations and sessile organisms. It involves dividing the study area into a grid and sampling within randomly selected squares. Point counts is used for birds and other mobile animals. In this method, we record the number of individuals of a species from a fixed point over a specified period of time. Remote sensing is used to assess abundance of species for large-scale or inaccessible areas. Satellite or drone imagery is used for this purpose. 
while transect sampling is used to study distribution of species across environments. It involves laying out a line or strip transect across the study area and recording species at regular intervals along this line. Question number nine. Which of the following statements is true regarding the concept of a species? A species is always defined by its physical characteristics alone. This is not true because different species can look similar, so we can't define a species just on the base of physical appearance. Different species can interbreed and produce fertile offspring. Different species usually cannot interbreed. If they do, the offspring are infertile. For example, horse and donkey can interbreed, but their offspring, mule, is infertile. Members of the same species are reproductively isolated from members of other species. So, this is the correct definition of a species. That is, a group of organisms that can interbreed with each other and produce fertile offsprings. Delta option is, the concept of a species can be defined solely based on genetic similarity. This is not correct because, different species can have very similar genes but they cannot interbreed. Last question. What type of speciation occurs when populations are geographically separated by a physical barrier? First of all, you should know what is speciation. So, the speciation is the evolutionary process by which new species arise from a common ancestor. In sympatric speciation, new species arise within the same geographical area without physical barriers. Parapatric speciation occurs when populations are adjacent to each other but occupy different environments along a gradient. Peripatric speciation involves a small, isolated population at the edge of a larger population. And the allopatric speciation occurs when a population is geographically separated into two or more isolated groups. So, this is our right option.